Hello everyone and welcome to Developing the Self. Today I'm going to be doing about how to get an A star in GCSE art as this is such a requested video. People asked me in the comments on my video showing a flip through of my GCSE sketchbooks. So if you haven't seen that already, just make sure to click on it and watch that so you have an idea of what I'm talking about and maybe give you a few ideas on what to do in your book. And make sure to stay to the end because I've got advice from my really close friend who's currently studying art at uni. She knows what she's talking about and she got an A star at A level art. So she has got advice for you at the end. So I'm going to stop waffling and let's get on with the tips. The first thing is deciding whether to do quality or quantity. I remember thinking in first year of it's either one or the other. And sadly, I think we all know it already, that art is the hardest subject when it comes to time and the investment that you have to put into it. So you do have to have both quality and quantity. Make sure you do this. My school recommended that we had to do one A4 page a week and just to schedule out a specific time for you to do art. For me, I'm really creative at night. So I would go to bed at like 3am in the morning <laughs> So it might not be too good, but that's when my creative juices were flowing and it, no one disturbed me. So I got a lot of art done at that time. Having that goal is really good because you can get a lot of pages and obviously the quality would be there because you're not rushing it and trying to get like a page done a night. So tip two is look at your specification. I did at Excel, but your specification may change from different exam boards. I think they're all pretty similar. Uh, so for mine, it was AO1 to AO4. I've got it here, actually. AO1 was develop, AO2 was refine, AO3 was record, and AO4 is present. And in each one of those, it literally explains what you have to do. And just by looking at specification, you're thinking, getting into the head of the examiner. Number three is to use loads of media. GCSE art is all about experimenting with different ideas. So having loads of media is a really good idea. So I use biro, pencil, colouring pencils, even like gel pens, like glittery gel pens. Obviously loads of paint, so acrylics, even other things like mod rock, clay, that kind of stuff. Within using different media, if you can, I would say use collages because they come in really helpful when you're coming to your final piece and just putting everything together. So number four is to annotate all your work. I'm talking every single page. Art can kind of be a BS subject and it can really help you to be able to talk about your art and other people's art. Along the same lines as annotating all your work is to focus on the formal elements. Got it here in my notes. So formal elements is under AO3 Refine and that includes line, tone, colour, form, pattern and texture. You can talk about your artist's research, about your own work, talk about what formal elements you use. So for example, in colour, you might have used complementary colours, and for lines, you might have done geometric shapes. And this is really helpful because in your artist's research, you should stay away from whether they had a pet dog and where they were from and stuff. Well, like where they were from, maybe you have a little line, but it should be about what kind of artist they are and what kind of art they produce. Why is it applicable to your work and how you can develop on that? So what do you like about it and what do you want to use? What kind of elements don't you think really resonate with your work and don't really play a part in what your vision is? So number six has also got to do with artist research. And this is to not copy so many of their artwork. Just don't copy too many pages. It doesn't look good and everyone knows you just copied it. It doesn't take... Well, it does still take skill, but it doesn't take as much skill to copy a piece of work as it comes with creativity and coming up with ideas. So what I did is I had a, a full sketchbook and I'd have one page kind of describing about how I was going to apply their work to mine and all about what the formal elements they use. And on the second page, I would do a copy of their work and do a little smaller photo 
just to show what I was doing. And then straight after doing that two page artist research, I would another page that was very, very similar to one of their pieces, but would have been my version. Put examples here, so hopefully you have an idea of what I'm talking about, or you can also go back to the video. <laughs> With your artist, make sure there's a lot of breadth. I was told this in school, but I don't know if you are, but we was told to have a contemporary artist, a historical artist, and a cultural artist. So having these three main artist types just gives you a lot of breadth, because just like your book is about quality and quantity, it's also about breadth and depth. <laughs> Number eight is to go on a gallery or museum visit. And just like you would with an artist's research, do that with your visit. I'm lucky that I live in London, so it's easy to get to one of the main museums. But even if you can't get to a smaller museum where you live, and especially considering the current climate with COVID-19, you can actually pretend you have gone and gone on the website such as Saatchi, the National Gallery and Tate Museum. And they've actually got loads of their artists on the website and just take photos from there and use artists that you like from there. It's kind of like going on a virtual field trip. So this is definitely a good way to add a little spice to your sketchbooks and kind of stand out from other people that are just doing artist research, especially at the moment. <laughs> And tip number nine is all about your final piece. When it comes to your final piece, it can be daunting, but the best way to go around it, go about it, go around it. The best way to go about it is to look at your book, for example, and go through the elements that you really like, that you've perfected. So for example, I did about architecture and about buildings for my vessels sketchbook. And I really liked using biros and acrylic paint. So I decided they were going to be my two media that I was going to focus on in my final piece because it would save time and the limit and also just something that I enjoy to do. Make sure you link to your artist research, your gallery visit, everything that you can kind of amalgamate into your final piece, do so. And then just try and come up with an idea that mixes all those together. So for example, this was my final piece about globalization in London and because I live in London I went to loads of galleries and had loads of first-hand photos from my visits and I kind of photoshopped that into this circle and created this and loads of little elements from my book were used in the final piece and I think the examiners really liked that. I made that in 2015 now and looking back on it, I'm still pretty proud of it. So just to reiterate, tip nine is all about your final piece and making sure your flow from your book just applies to the final piece. So it's kind of like the examiner is going on the journey with you to this original idea with this just like one word or a phrase that you think, oh gosh, what is this about? To your final idea, which is all developed over the months and months that you spent on it. Before I get to the last tip from my friend who got a start A level, if you enjoyed this video, like to let me know and comment if there's anything in particular you want me to focus on more. For example, do you want me to give examples of background ideas or artist research? Just let me know and I'll try and do that. Okay, so on to tip number 10 from my dearest friend, and that is to listen to your teacher's advice carefully, but to make sure that you're doing the art that you want to reduce. As soon as you start trying to make art to please others, it kills creativity. I mean, if that doesn't sound like an artist, I don't know what does. <laughs> but I really agree with that. Just try and enjoy GCSE art. It's one of those things that is so much hard work but when you look back on it, for example, I did it years and years and years ago now, but I'm still proud of the art I produce and still in a way had fun. I think I might be looking through rose tinted glasses right there, but yeah, just try to have fun as much as you can, even though it's so hard and time consuming. I know I've been through it. I didn't even go on to A-level art because it was so time consuming, but I hope you found this video helpful. If you have found it helpful in any way, just make sure to tell me in the comments, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos if you want to. And I hope to see you very soon. This has been Developing the Self and thanks for watching. Bye.